başlayabiliriz sanırım. So let us get started. Hello everyone and welcome to our session. This is well actually 15 minutes ago um, there was yet another um, screening that uh, we all saw together and this was about um, street animals in Turkey. Um, one of the most important documentaries on street animals in Turkey. So th that was that was quite fun to watch. And um, it covers Istanbul, what it means to be living in Istanbul, what it means to be um, neighbors. Um, and obviously none of these things are limited to human beings. That, that's why uh, this documentary was quite inspiring for us. And today, um, we will be discussing this um, in greater detail. We will be talking about Istanbul and um, you know what it means to be a part of Istanbul, what it means to coexist in Istanbul, not just as human beings, but um, with non-human inhabitants as well, and what this entails for, for what we do. Um, animal ethics, this is basically what we are going to talk about. We're going to be also talking about welfare and so on and so forth. So this is, um, um, you know, supposed to be a panel, but we're going to do this in an interactive manner. We want this to be an informal chat. That's how we uh, conceive this session. And um, your um, input is also equally as important. We kindly ask you to also make contributions to this discussion. Now, our speakers' bios are all available online, but very briefly, let me try and introduce them to you. And by the way, today's in today's um, um, session, we have uh, Gülen Güler, the producer of Tashkafa, the film that we uh, screened um, um, today, and she is one of the um, co-partners or co-founders of uh, Yalan Dunya production company, and she's had many other projects as well, video installation projects and um, others. And right now, as we speak, um, since 2022, uh, she's been running an EU project, James Joyce Ulysses um, Centenary Anniversary, um, and she's also in charge of that. And on top of that, um, she has a ch ch children's book published to her name. So perhaps we could kick this session off with her. And then, um, but let me also introduce um, um, Sevgi Ortaç and Mine Hildırım as well. Um, let me say a few words about them. Sevgi Ortaç is an artist. Um, One World City, uh, Small Findings are some of the shorts that she's directed and also she has um, spearheaded many research projects and on top of that she is a member of several collectives, um, arts uh, collectives um, in Istanbul and in other places and she also teaches at um, Koç University, uh, Mine Yıldırım it teaches at Kadir Has University, and at the same time, um, she is uh, one of the coordinators of uh, the Four Legged City initi Initiative, and she is a volunteer for disaster relief. And um, perhaps we're going to also talk about that later on. And her PhD thesis was on um, street dogs of Istanbul. Now, Gülen, let us begin with you, shall we? And uh, Tashkafa. How did they find you? How did you find them? And um, this documentary project, how did it come into existence? Um, how did you uh, manage to do it? Let us begin with that. So, all right. So yes, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity, Altyazı and Marmara Urban Forum. I'd like to thank them both for bringing us together and uh, for giving us the opportunity to uh, screen the film once again. Actually, this film dates back uh, more than 10 years ago. I think it's been 12 years since it was made. And yes, it says 2013 um, on the, on the, on the um, credits, but it was actually shot way before. If you've seen the film, um, you will see this uh, British uh, guy ca called Ian McAllister. And really, truly, um, and, um, you know, there, there isn't much of a fiction in a documentary, but um, everything is actually um, b b is based on facts. Uh, Bill, the narrator, um, visited me in Galata, I remember well, and at night um, dogs barked at him, and historically um, there are some, um, you know, 
um, you know, strangers draw a bit of barking from dogs. And I live in Galata, and these were dogs of the neighborhood. And when they barked at him, he was concerned. And he's, you know, from Britain, and he's not used to the concept of having animals on the streets. I mean, he, he didn't necessarily enjoy the idea. And also, um, people intervened, and uh, people asked him who he was, and uh, he, this is how he met Tashkafa, and they shook hands. And from that point onwards, Bill um, experienced the shock and the um, miracle of his life. It was a life-changing experience for him, and he said that this was truly exceptional, truly special, and um, for us, obviously, I mean, these are dogs of the hood, uh, cats of the hood, um, the seagulls are also um, have names, sort of, in our neighborhood. So, I mean, it's just like um, drinking tap water. It's part of our everyday life. And um, But a fresh pair of eyes um, see this as something truly interesting. And um, I, that's how I experienced this, or how I came to realize this for the first time. And I wanted to ask myself why this was interesting. And then um, I realized that... Um, this street, and I don't like the word street because um, I think we need a new descriptor, a new definition. Because um, I think these descriptions also uh, restrain us. Um, maybe um, instead of saying street dogs, uh, stray dogs, we should say neighborhood dogs, neighborhood um, cats. Uh, that's what we should call them. That, that's what I tend to think or the cat of, the, of our building, whatever. So all of these things I came to realize, thanks to uh, this British friend, and I realized also that, that in certain cities in the world, um, with you know, um, and, and animals and, you know, with non-human inhabitants, uh, when there is no social interaction, I feel um, alone. And, and it seems as if uh, my, my friend Bill, Bill McAllister, actually um, realized something that is really fundamental in my own psychology as well. I mean, um, there was this thing inside me that I wasn't aware of previously. And, and then uh, this idea for the film um, came into existence. And then I somehow um, observed things um, as an outsider as much as I could. And this is what I realized. Um, you know, obviously we live in a neighborhood and we cherish the neighborhood and um, as we created that sense, um, obviously people interact with one another, they forge ties with one another um, through their um, ties with cats and dogs. So basically you chat people up by talking about dogs and cats we are at the heart of Istanbul and you live in a building and how do you interact with others in the neighborhood? How do you make friends with them? You ask them where Tashkaf is or where Sarıkız is, uh, whether Sarıkız is uh, poorly, um, you know, how she looked a bit poor in health yesterday and downhearted yesterday and so on and so forth. So that's how you um, start talking with people. You share this responsibility. You share this um, sensitivity about life, which I think is really important, and and basically that's how you, um, despite the fact that you don't know one another, or maybe you've you've had a quarrel a couple of days ago, but because you share the neighborhood with these cats and dogs, you talk to one another and you assume this responsibility together in this safe area, and um, you know people can make peace uh, by talking about these animals. So, you know, it's really important for community building as well, um, these non-human inhabitants. And, um, you know, it's been 12 years since we shot this film. And obviously the neighborhood um, changed um, over the years, uh, physically and demogra demographically. Uh, we've had more uh, tourists in the last um, decade. And... Um, that we have seen a rise in materialism in our neighborhood as well. So um, the set of values might have changed as well, one would say. But um, the same social connections may um, not be maintained. Or Tashkafa may have left, but still on every street, in every um, corner, you find dogs 
and you have cats in the building and um, and that's how people interact and how that that's how people forge ties with one another in the in the neighborhood and um, so yes we have this um, um, these non-human inhabitants in the neighborhood and we coexist together and when we were making this film actually um, this is what we were thinking about like um, this culture of coexistence, this culture of a existing happily side by side, that's what we wanted to contemplate and hopefully we were able to do that and you know, the film um, is still, I mean, uh, you know, the fact that we're talking about this film after 12 years is a testament to the fact that we were um, able to do that. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them as well. Thank you. Yes, um, also feel free to intervene and um, ask questions or make any uh, additional comments. Please feel free to do so. And maybe here's what we could, um, what, what we could also say. I think this is really important. 2013, um, that, that's, uh, and you know, it was basically shot in 2010 and that, then there was the editing and it was released in 2013. It's been 10 years exactly. And right now when we see this film, we see that it's still quite relevant, right? I mean, I don't know whether things have changed for the good um, or, or bad, and it makes us think that. And um, so yes, Istanbul, um, has human and non-human inhabitants and they have ties with one another and this has always been integral to the identity of the city. It has always made the city who, who uh, or what it is. I mean, we have this Hayrıs'ız island uh, off the coast of Istanbul where stray dogs were once exiled, where they died a horrific death. And um, we have side stories and we also have stories of coexistence humans and non-humans living in the same neighborhood and sharing uh, bread, breaking bread and so on and so forth. So this is quite intertwined and this is quite, a, there is a bit of a duality here. Um, we've always had violence against street animals and sadly that's still rampant. But on the other hand, we have these stories of coexistence, like I said, stories of compassion, affection and curiosity towards one another. So I think that um, maybe Mine could help us understand this better. Um, being urbane, being part of the city, but also realizing that uh, there are also non-humans um, inhabiting the city. Could you please um, present us with a, with a historical uh, context? And what does it tell us about seeing this film and seeing Tash Kafa um, from 10 years ago? I mean, um, you know, street animals are quite... Um, you know, they're targeted these days. There's a lot of hate speech against them. So what would you say um, about that as well? Well, thank you very much. I, I mean, for long years, I have been working with animals um, and living with animals. And I, 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 I get really um, moved, really emotional when I watch films of this kind. Uh, you know, I've said this before, but I mean, I... I, I, I get really emotional and sometimes it's a bit too much for me but uh, you know I had the opportunity to watch the entirety of Tashka today and as I was watching this film and Özlem you you know you asked this question and I think that um, the, you know the, you you know these are all questions that we have when we watch a film of this kind now we're talking about an animal and yes, I, I said, I, you know, I get emotional, but one of the film's strengths is the fact that all these questions, all these emotions, this um, wide uh, scale of emotions is to be found in the film. So what do we see in the film? We see hum human stories as well, and we see, in, you know, those who live in Istanbul, in the city, and this is a, city, a story of Istanbul as well, but... Uh, this could have taken place elsewhere as well. And um, there's this universal, I mean, um, this um, about humanity. Um, there's this um, emotion, there's this emotional um, um, intensity when a human being meets an animal or a group of human meets um, animals. Um, and um, these are quite ephemeral, uh, quite transient, um, and th they might um, be repeated. Sometimes you uh, see eye to eye or look someone in the in the eye, and um, and sometimes animal look at you in the eye, and there's this emotion that it evokes in you. 
when you um, experience that. And we see, we see that quite often, and we hear that from a lot of people. And in Turkey, this is something that, I mean, um, and this, this is the reason why we got together here today. And every time, this um, amazes me, and this really makes me very happy. Um, in this country where we live together, I mean, since we, we were um, children till the day we die, this is a part of our lives. This is quite mundane, perhaps. This is quite, um, you know, quite ordinary. Uh, these encounters, these day-to-day -day encounters are always here, um, and they're quite widespread. But these encounters are actually, uh, m might be unnamed. They're not theorized, but you know, we do not conceptualize them, but we live with these animals. And uh, this is a, a social fact, and this is a force to be reckoned with. And we see this, um, you know, people um, in their own language, in their own expression, um, and they also express these animals, you know, from their eye, you know, the eyes to their tails, from their defecation to their offspring, from their deserting the neighborhood. Um, you know, there, there are all sorts of relationships um, and um, you know these things are told through day-to-day -day encounters, and this is this is very much a part of being a part of the city. These are traces of an animal um, in the city, um, and these toys, uh, th these animals are not toys, or these are not pets. Um, they're not on a leash. Um, they're not clothed. Um, you know that they, they, you know they're not um, you know um, sort of sexied up. Um, um, you know, in, in um, public transportation, uh, you see these cute videos of um, cats and dogs, but, you know, that's not how you see animals on the streets. It's warts and all. Um, and violence um, is somehow circumvented, but all these encounters uh, evoke deep feelings in us, like sadness and emotional expansion. We see the intensity of that, and I think this is incredible and um, really important. And um, in English-speaking um, parts of the world, there, there's, there are so many theories about this. In post-human world, um, people have some theories about a possible post-human world. And... And um, you know this is um, this is really uh, striking. We meet these animals on the streets historically, relationship-wise, culture-wise. We encounter these animals um, not in a, in a, in, a, in a shelter, um, and these are not pedigree animals, um, and obviously um, they're not pets either. So um, this is a historic uh, moment uh, because that's where we meet them on the streets. And I agree with Gulen. Uh, we shouldn't call them street animals or stray animals. Uh, we use these concepts, these words in Turkey quite often. Um, and th th this entails a sense of uh, contagion or a sense of danger or hazard. But that is not the case. I mean, these are um, simply animals, non-human inhabitants of the city. Unfortunately, um, we see these animals uh, being portrayed in a bad light, um, but these are animals that are uh, integral parts of this coexistence, uh, that these are inhabitants of the city. Um, so um, maybe we do not have this relationship or, or this concept of citizenship for animals, but they have certain rights as well. And because of the fact that they live in the city, so we, we can question all these um, concepts who gets to live in a certain place, who has the right to be there, who belongs and who doesn't. Um, so it's not just about language, religion, or race. Um, it's not about ownership. It's also about um, mere existence. And these animals actually help us think about these things and think about what it means to be neighbors, what it means to be uh, coexisting together. And I, I think we are quite fortunate because we live in this in, in environment. Uh, this is what this makes me think of. Um, this was, was a film that was shot 10 years ago, 12 years ago. It's a, it's a testimony. It's an oral history um, effort. But at the same time, it's very much relevant. It's timeless. Um, and, and it's not limited to time and space. We are talking about the time and space, but maybe 100 years from now, um, 
or maybe 100 years before in Istanbul, you know, um, you know, street animals in Istanbul uh, were um, sent to this uh, island, Hayrısızada, and around 80,000 street animals were um, sent to the most remote island of the shore in Istanbul, like quite a small um, island where there are no humans, and they were exiled there, and they were killed. You know, they 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 were left to their own devices, and they died a horrific death. Um, um, so this film also talk talks about that, you know, how these animals uh, died in cages uh, on the way, and this was in 1910. And this incident actually is also quite striking, and it you know it it is mentioned in Tashkafa as well. So um, history, our history is not just um, about compassion and affection, but uh, as Tashkafa the film shows us, the public authority, the modern state, um, sometimes. Uh, committed such atrocities, such acts of violence, and um, 80,000 animals, like I said, were exiled. That was the political decision, political transformation, um, and also um, not being taken care of. Um, I mean, because the municipalities or the states, they just take care of the people who are already wealthy. I mean, whatever the political image they want to create, that's what they've been doing. And that was like that today and 100 years ago again. So whatever the image they want to create, um, they um, actually do a massacre or kill uh, the people or the, the sorry the animals that they that doesn't belong there so it shows um, the relationship between the state and the animals between the state and the citizens and so protection and coexistence that I was mentioning in the beginning that is very holy very strong but also a very vulnerable concept um, I mean, I've been working in Antep for the last eight years. I've been working to protect the animals, actually. And I know how resilient, how strong the animals are, actually. And all these sessions um, uh, of Marmara Urban uh, Platform is very important. I wish we actually talked more about how to render animals more resilient, too, because um, animals are not only resilient, but they're also, at the same time, very vulnerable. So this uh, vulnerability uh, causes us to see them as also victims. But we have to also admit that they have this emotional strength, but this emotional strength is only possible under the protection of people. So they really deserve um, a healthy life and a, and a noble death. Uh, so this is what I've been uh, thinking about. Tashkafa, not only in the last decade, but maybe in the last century actually, uh, has been um, a, a, um, a topic that I've been thinking about. And it's like a pendulum, and uh, the state's violence, the existence or the non-existence of the public authority. I mean, the isolated or the massacred or the murdered um, street animals. And uh, sometimes they, they, sometimes out of a fear, sometimes out of a fear of a disease, or sometimes when you're preparing the city for larger events like the Olympics, etc. This is what this what the state had been doing, and sometimes with a different corporate capacity. But there's also a reality in the society, and this protection is also organized as a very deep wave, um, um, compassion. Um, uh, respecting the rights, etc. This is also another uh, societal reality in Turkey. And I think this is very critical. The lives of the um, animals I have been um, actually unfortunately been in the middle of these two extremes. Either they were subject to violence or they were really protected and showed affection on the other hand, but there has never been in between. So I got very emotional uh, when I was uh, talking about these topics. And so um, people who actually uh, think about these problems, the, um, 
unfortunately get uh, or fortunately get emotional of course um, that is the movie itself is like that also i mean uh, i feel the same emotions with you mina definitely and uh, having watched the movie also numerous times so these two um, extremes i mean this pendulum uh, that uh, goes from one end to another. On one hand, there is the presence and the uh, unpresence of the state. On one hand, there is the, um, the systematic killings of the animals. Um, so whether the state is present or not present, there is always um, uh, some destruction. And, and sometimes, um, systematically, the animals are made invisible. So there is this violence part on one hand, and on the other hand, there is curiosity, compassion, coexistence, um, co growth, uh, or growing together, flourishing together, uh, living together. Because when we talk about the animal rights, it's not only about the right to live and breathe, actually, isn't it? I mean, we're always defending uh, a good life. Um, um, a noble life, not only for people, but also for animals. Uh, the right to live well. Um, so this is what should we should be pursuing. So um, we're trying to establish this um, in the presence and in non-existence of the state. And now, especially against the street dogs, for instance, there's also a huge care um, I think that would be right to say that. But also, there's, as I said, um, um, as you said, there's also other people um, who are actually attacking these people who care, who show this diligence. So this is this intricate web of relationships. There's vulnerability and strength, and you actually feel all these uh, different uh, emotions together. And the documentary is actually showing this very strongly. I mean, you can see how Tashkafa and other dogs, Ejo for instance, are addressed with their names. And so when we actually general, generalize them, saying street dogs, they're not only street dogs. They all have unique lives. And they're all um, like individuals with their own names, etc. This is what the documentary makes us understand. And also, uh, this is what art does, actually. Um, for a living creature to be recognized as a living creature means that the death of that creature is also recognized as the death of a unique creature. So this is how um, the documentary presented it to us. So I would like to now give the floor to Sevgi because, uh, I mean, you've been um, shooting such movies, you work in other areas of art as well. So maybe art is something that uh, shows us the vulnerability of life, the strength of coexistence, and movies or other forms of arts actually show us how vivid it is to live together, to coexist in the city. So um, maybe it also pushes us to think about the essence of all these concepts. So, uh, what would be your uh, thoughts about this? Um, yeah, I uh, actually thought about this um, presence and also um, non-existence, as you said. And there's this um, craziness about uh, representing the animals in the social media. I mean, uh, the animals are theoretically shown um, how they are represented by people. Uh, but um, the more visible they are, the more 
silent they become. That's how I feel. I mean, this silence or being um, out of words. I mean, of course, the dogs are not silent, but they cannot represent themselves through words. So the more silent uh, they are, the more uh, we try to feed them. And I mean, our wealth, our poverty, everything in this city uh, makes us feel very full towards the animals. And of course, there is the problem of representation. Um, just like in, in the art, how are we going to talk about the stories of the others uh, while we are actually so full against them? Uh, here we also have to think about the human psychology. Before we think about how we feel um, against uh, the animals, we also watch the absence of the people, and people are sorry, they're apologizing. They're apologizing for their own non-presence, and so we are actually apologizing from the, um, the animals. We're projecting tons of different emotions. And um, most of the time, uh, of course, in a movie, you represent something. I mean, we talk about how well it is represented in the movie, how well it is explained in the movie. However, uh, we could have actually built everything um, on non-existence, non-representation as well, from nothingness or not being able to explain things. But the interesting thing in the movie is like, we see the movies and, uh, in, uh, sorry, in the movie there are the frames and there are f um, individual animals in each frame. Then there are individual people in every frame and they're talking like crazy, they're so full, they're trying to um, express themselves, but both frames do not represent the animals. Not the frames with the animals or not the frames with the people, they do not represent uh, the animals, but there's something in that transition, in that void from one frame to another. And this is something we're very familiar with from Ulus Bekar. I mean, that um, um, that concept of opening a, a space, a moment. So between those frames, the potential relationships that are actually uh, expressed are really the center of the reality we're talking about. So um, and before I uh, worked on the walls of Istanbul, and there was a very severe urban transformation, and there were many known and unknown uh, powers back then, municipality, governor's office, activists, NGOs, and and when uh, I mean people instead of talking about them, they actually talk about urban myths uh, that they have never known about. Um, like they were talking about these um, myths of saints. Um, so the personalities are not known but there is this freedom of space for them, the unknowns, the saints, the people. The saints have left the city, for instance. One person said that because the um, houses uh, that were close to the city walls were um, um, uh, collapsing. Um, uh, so that is also, and then we were talking about those people who went out of those demolished houses. So I think the animals, street animals, have something similar to that. People talk about the saints who are dead, but they were walking with their slippers, and the, 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 the sound of their slippers, slippers were hurt, but in fact those are dead people. So it's like when you're talking about a lost dog, um, the man walks through a grave and the man talks to the dead people, but those 
are the things that we want to speak about, but we cannot speak about them because the people we want to speak them with are dead. So there is this interim place. So both in the documentary and art and in the movies, we have to um, pinpoint to this uh, space. Otherwise, we're full of thoughts. We're full of anger. We're full of opinions, emotions. And there are these very thick curtains. And opening those thick curtains and claiming that we see an animal is a very strong claim. And I also thought about uh, this unknown thing about the animals. Like uh, they come out when it's cool, or they don't poop out in the street, they do it there in a, in a secret place. Or the animals know when a person is a bad person. So all these attributes that are attributed to saints also are attributed to animals. So this is like superstitious beliefs, or, uh, you know, not even conservatism, but not superstition, but it's not very modern either. I mean, when a Western man comes and shakes hands with a man, maybe it looks very modern, and that's how animals and people are introduced. And, and that man from the Western civilization says, why don't you take care of this animal? Or why is this animal overfed, etc." So there's this part. And then there's these superstitious uh, attributes that are given to the people. So there's, again, a huge uh, gap that we're accommodating that unknown always. So this is also about the representation of the absence. So the language of the movie is also a little bit like that Don Major is talking about this. So we're looking at things, but we don't know what we're seeing, like blurred colors or abstract things that are normally very natural and concrete. So we're looking at them, but we don't see them. But we understand them, but we don't understand them. We hear things, and then we, it's talking about the dark forests or looking at the stars. And so the camera cannot see those um, dark spaces, actually. We cannot see them either. And Tashkafa is la laying um, on his back, looking at the sky. And sky is so amazing. The stars, I mean, these are very amazing stories. But Tashkafa is laying on the ground and uh, somehow very connected to the ground. But then all these big stories that we attribute um, to the stars is uh, completely different. And Tashkov is very unknown as well. You know, um, even looking at the um, planet and we're thinking about certain things, maybe the animals are thinking about certain uh, things. I mean, when they are lying on their backs, it's like whether they're dead or not. Um, am I dead or am I alive? So all these things were actually a part of that movie. We can actually solve this. We can actually create information about this animal. So this is just on the contrary of the modernist approach of the Western uh, people. Let's you know flow in this darkness. Let's accept this unknown thing. And then let's try to be open to this uh, uh, unknown thing that we're actually facing. I mean, every relationship of the animal uh, with its sexuality, with its toilet habits, with its food habits, etc. So in a city where it's hard to live, the dog lies on its back. And it actually makes us remember what is possible. It is possible to be something beyond be being a person. So maybe remembering this is very important because it's about 
you know, coexistence. Coexisting peacefully, actually. So that was actually what I exactly meant, uh, because representation always is referred as representing something, but representation also has something that cannot be explained about it. Um, and when it's about um, animals or the plants, anything that is not a, a human being, then uh, really, um, then our emotions, I mean, we're actually projecting our emotions, our thoughts, uh, to animals, and that is what we uh, tend to do. So Tashkafa, I think, was very successful in terms of um, maybe there were many human words uh, in the background, but beyond those words, he w we he's in a space where we can never ever reach with our own thoughts or emotions or words. So it shows us the existence of such a different uh, space. It's not like, I mean, we can never say this dog feels this or thinks about that, etc. So there's always this obscurity that we can never reach. So all that narrative in between with its color, with its visuals, there might be certain discrepancies. And um, yes, these are, there are some interruptions in between. And these, um, with, with, with its texture, actually gives us an idea about Tashkafa, his existence and also gives us something that's unattainable, a world that is unattainable. But it also reminds us its existence. Um, so yeah, it could be a better world, yes, absolutely. Because, you know, you know um, currently, I mean, we're not, on a, we're not doing so fine, right? The modernist um, order is not doing so well. So may, maybe there is hope in this as well. It is unknown, but it maybe it entails hope as well. Yes. And maybe, um, you know, cinema has always been human-oriented all across um, history, uh, formally and materially as well. So that history is also based on the exploitation of animals. And also, on top of that, um, the fact that the human eye is seeing these things and is also um, finding out about these things is really important. And Tashkafa is trying something um, to disrupt that and it tries to venture into this uh, vague area, um, an area w with a different sort of um, um, set of features and you know, dif discrepancies, this and that. And um, th there's another layer that actually it um, indicates. And by multiplying these um, layers, the story that it tells, um, uh, I mean, try, it tries to find ways to get closer to that story, and that's why this film is really uh, full of merit. Um, so there's this, I mean, um, Tashkafa um, reminded me what is actually not seen. Um, you know, it makes vision sort of obsolete. And it draws our attention to things that uh, are not invisible to the eye. When, it, uh, when it's about animals, we have some ideas about what they think, what they feel, what they um, need. I mean, we like to talk about these things um, quite often. I mean, because of um, the fact that we, we, we have uh, good intentions, perhaps. But um, the film really invites us to that domain, that uh, vague domain. And I think that's really important, what you... Um, also called, um, uh, you know, lack of vision actually spoke to, 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 to my heart. Um, so that is my take um, on it. Uh, Gulen, uh, I don't know whether you, you, you would like to add anything. So yes, I mean, these are, I mean, this has been really interesting. Um, I mean, this has given me the opportunity to see the film through a different lens. and. Um, this um, whole m issue um, of non-existence, rather than, and you know, at that time, because I, I remember when we were making this film, uh, and with Andrea as well, with the director of the film, we had these discussions uh, at that time as well. Uncertainty and, you know, lack of definition and also non-existence, vagueness, these were all 
um, overarching themes um, in the film. And I'm someone who comes from that neighborhood and someone else, a stranger, actually told me that this was an odd uh, relationship. And um, this lack of um, definition, or, uh, the beauty of that lack of definition or, or that vagueness is what uh, I think is appealing because when things are not clearly defined, um, and another opportunity beckons, I mean thousands of uh, new opportunities beckon, many new doors open um, because we're not limited by those definitions, we're not pigeonholed by them, um, it's not like the bus is going to arrive at quarter past seven, um, there is no um, strict time, and that is why uh, people in the neighborhood, they have their own um, ways of doing things, and yes, everything is perhaps out of um, focus. John Berger, in his book, The King, um, also um, features these themes. So basically, I mean, yes, out of focus or vague because um, we don't really know what we're, uh, what we're um, th thinking about. And, you know, when we were shooting this film, the one thing that really appealed to me was the fact that people in the neighborhood, they, uh, they really cared about the psychology of the, of the um animals when you you know if you were to ask them you know tell us about your own psychology they would say nothing but um, they, they they have these um, theses about the um, mood of these animals so it's like self-reflection as well in a way I would say because um, 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 there is that element but also at the end of the day there is a lot of um, um, abstraction and many things that cannot be described, maybe that's the beauty of it, right? I mean, uh, maybe that's uh, why we do not feel alone, because of this, this lack of definition. And within this area, I, I feel happy. Yes, I mean, just an addition. Um, this lack of definition and this uncertainty, when I think about these two, I perhaps, I mean, with animals, um, we have all sorts of contacts, be it intellectual or, you know, living together or encounters within the neighborhood, not within the household only, but within the, and also, I mean, all these emotions uh, coming from animals, um, I mean, um, it's quite tempor uh, temporal as well, and concrete as well. And this is, um, there is all these feelings of alienation that's at the heart of uh, Western modernity, the um, chasm between animals and non, um, and humans. Um, so this is, um, this is something that is stipulated um, um, to us and this creates a lot of alienation as well and creates a lot of uh, violence so yes um, so it's not uncertainty because it's quite certain we know what these relations are between the ages of uh, zero to two for instance I mean people talk about uh, rabies there's this rabies scare animals are always seen as um, vectors in cities. I mean, the media also portrays them as such. The government also portrays them as such. And unfortunately, uh, it penetrates into our language as well. So we perpetuate violence as well. Um, we, we get scared of animals. We, we learn to be scared. And then you put it on a rational pedestal. Um, unvaccinated animals, unvaccinated um, dogs. Um, they will um, come into contact with a feral animal and then there, there will be rabies, um, people will contract rabies. The animals are vaccinated, people are vaccinated. Um, but still, there is um, rabies outbreak. I mean, um, in a village, for instance, all the animals were, all the dogs were culled. So that uncertainty, so those gray areas are sort of um, 
closed um, by implementing these aggressive and rigid policies. But within our daily practice, um, uh, we have this reality and we see this um, as some sort of um, a controversy, um, animals versus animal lovers versus non-animal lovers. And I think this is also quite important as well. And um, it is turned into um, a, a an argument. And um, it's quite absurd as well in Turkey as well. Like, um, you know, people talk about the so-called um, cat food lobby, um, or cat lovers in a derogatory manner. I mean, this is, this is terrible. It's as if you're a member of a cult um, and um, you get alienated and, um, and uh, you get ostracized. But actually, um, this is something that we need to um, remind people of. It's an active act of remembering um, and um, an active uh, remembrance. This is what we need to remember. These animals have always been here and we've always uh, coexisted happily. I mean, obviously, as people, we do not exist on our own. Um, so the relationship between humans and animals uh, is quite integral to our existence. We are finite, uh, we are fragile, and we're, um, I mean, life, when it comes to meaning and the relationship between life and death, I mean, we are animals. We are co you know, quite close to animals, and we experience this on a daily basis. And also, um, in the discussion of mod modernity, and of course, um, this, I mean, this is, we are at the, um, not at the heart of modernity, um, we're at the shore of that modernity. Um, so, I mean, these also um, sort of help us question that in 1910, um, dogs were called in the name of modernity, and right now um, the government is quite anti-Western in Turkey, um, they're talking about global selves and so on and so forth. But behind these discourses, you see, actually, um, when it comes to the relationship between animals and humans, they're quite violent as well, and much more violent than the West, perhaps. So um, this is something that is quite um, staggering as well. On the 8th of October, this um, Sunday, coming up, we have... We have a demonstration in Istanbul. Uh, we will get together and um, and um, raise our voices uh, for street animals. And we will ma make a call for action. You, you do not have to um, love um, animals only. Um, it's also about protecting our coexistence and uh, defending rights. If you're a right defender, if your minds and your hearts um, are in this, um, please, please come and join us to also um, ask for justice in the face of violence. We will be gathering in Kadıköy, so if you're interested, please come and join us. We'd be very happy to see you in our midst. So... We need to be there as human beings. We need to assume responsibility. That's very important, I believe. So yeah, thank you. Yes. How much time have we got? I think we started a bit late. Yes, I reiterate this call. Um, people usually celebrate 4th of October. Um, but 8th of October is also going to be a great um, opportunity for us. Um,
So you talked about these vague areas, and you talked about representation, uh, seeing and fixating, and um, all these reflexes. So that's um, that's something that we have been uh, um, talking about, and. Um, You know, these encounters on the streets in the neighborhood we've talked about, and we've also talked about um, street animals, the category of street animals, and um, how we need to sometimes, um, you know, how we sometimes need to see it through a different lens. Uh, you gave examples of rabies. Um, there's a bit of a scare, and... And... We see humans as omnipot omnip omnipotent and um, as beings that should not die, but um, that is not the case. I mean, um, we are very much uh, mortals, and um, you know, because of we, we could die a natural death, or our death could be because of a disaster, and. Uh, When it comes to animals, um, yes, these are um, beings that live out there on their own rather than protecting them. You know, they live and die, they find food, they um, rummage through the bin uh, to find something to eat. I mean, that's, that's the thing that uh, we envis envisage in our minds, but in, uh, in the cities, I mean, we obviously live together and um, it's not just a relationship between uh, animals, but between humans as well. Togetherness, um, respecting one another, treating each other with dignity, uh, these are all very important as well. So, um, this coexistence should be about um, showing attention to one another. And, um, And um, this is something that we need to realize. And um, So this is a dream um, that we um, and it should be um, an opportunity for us to sort of um, talk about life and death. So yes, this whole issue of representation, representation in the media and um, in the parliament, um, we've had a couple of such experiences previously, such as the Yedikule uh, allotment. We try to protect the allotments, allotment owners um, and farmers there and animals. But this protection, this relationship is, is something that we don't like. I mean, who are we to protect them? Why can't we do it together? Why can't we engage in a shared battle? And um, this is something that we I, I realized um, um, as well. I mean, I, I was... Um, I was once, uh, I found a job after the, my involvement in these projects, in these initiatives, and people were really happy that I uh, found a job in the end. 
And now, I mean, um, uh, improvement of uh, people's lives and animals' lives is uh, really um, the, uh, two things that go head to head. So how can we actually um, talk about this? What we want for neighborhoods, for uh, where we live? I mean, these are things that also um, pertain to animals and vice versa. And how do we engage in an activism about this? How do we ask for these rights? And um, you know, coexistence and um, you know, living in a favorable under favorable conditions. This is something that we need to be um, moving towards. Um, and um, these are uh, very much intertwined and sometimes seen as separate. But that is not the case. Isn't that the case? This is really important because, I mean, in, in elementary school, in, uh, you know, it's, it's like, you know, we always have this common denominator, right? And this is something that we um, talk about all the time. This is something that we need or sometimes uh, animals need. Uh, this is what the disabled people need, the children need or the immigrants in the city need, I mean, of course, with different needs, actually. But we're seeing the most uh, naked uh, nature of this in the disasters, because the uh, peop where we actually lose people, the, the least we lose people is uh, and animals is uh, in the greenery. And we talk about the lack of greenery as well. But I mean, you know, the greenery is a great thing. But of course, we are now living in, in the existence of lack of forest. I mean, we don't, I mean, we now have uh, children's parks in between the buildings. And that's where the people have escaped. That's where the people have found refuge at. And so, um, there, um, and and, that, and we have forgotten about so many things. Uh, I mean, protecting one another when our neighbor um, gets lost, for instance, we become curious about them. Or when you talk, think about the disaster, of course, disaster is a huge shock. It's a crisis. But in order to survive, uh, I mean, the capacity to survive is completely different. And right now, all nostalgic, all romantic categories, um, science, art, and everything, all these concepts that are given by um, these things, I mean, apart from that we live in a very emergency situation, just think about um, the climate um, crisis. I mean, just right in the, in the middle, there is a meteor that has fallen down. And we're trying to bring together our uh, forces. And you talked about the saints, for instance. And the saints are also included in this culture. Like there, there are the also crazy people that are protected in this society. So there's this halo of protection protecting the one out in the street. We're never um, alienating them. We're trying to um, comprehensively protect them. We're protecting the animals, not for a certain function. I mean, you cannot say that I, uh, in the old times they used to say they were actually, in, when the municipalities did not exist, collecting the garbage, and they were actually like security, the street dogs, because there's always, you know, um, and they knew in the neighborhoods who are um, the um, people who live in the neighborhood. And when there's someone from outside the neighborhood, they were protecting the streets. So there were many functions actually attributed to the dogs. Or sometimes uh, uh, there were some there is a different thing that could not be only uh, um, uh, can be explained through religion, but uh, people say like, w if I feed these people or uh, homeless people or the homeless animals, then um, this will be like a good deed, and it's a part of our history. And there are, for instance, the crazy person 
uh, in this street, um, they could also, well, they were also in need of a, a, a plate of meal. Or uh, now we don't see the graveyards anymore. I mean, that was something uh, completely different. And and we want to see ourselves in the mirror that is held by the politicians so that death, vulnerability, disease, uh, you know, uh, because you know the animals, um, they uh, die in the middle of the street. And it's like, uh, uh, and they also um, mate with their, uh, spouses as well in the street. So then there is this compassion, that responsibility, that all come out from that responsibility. I mean, during the disaster we try to survive, that's also out of our responsibility. I mean, we're responsible because we're responsible to protect another living creature. And I mean, so, um, it's about um, having a responsibility and also because we're not immortal. Of course, it's not going back to the pre-modern times because sometimes people say, you know, during the Ottoman Empire time, the uh, animals used to live a wealthy life, a very healthy life. And with modernization, we have lost the prosperous living uh, style of the animals. That's also true. But think about a civilization, uh, the civilization that is different from the neo-colonial Ottoman Empire time. Uh, but these are all, all included in our own history, because um, the, if the if the, uh, the street animals were not seen as like the saints. Uh, of the, these times, they would not exist. I mean, one of my friends say, if the dogs are still alive in this country, it's because they cannot be eaten. Because if they were eaten, probably we, did, couldn't, we didn't have any cats or dogs out in the street. But you know, they're not functional. They don't ha have any uh, functionality, and they continue to live just um, thanks to uh, the um, compassion we feel for them. This is also kind of nostalgic. This, doesn't, this also has a historic aspect. But not only that, it's also a different relationship um, that actually connects history to the present day. Yes, I think we have to wrap up now. Anything you would like to add? Uh, maybe we can have your last comments. Um, thank you very much for your invitation. I would like to thank for the uh, subtitles, actually, because, uh, I mean, um, in um, uh, uh, this event is about also untitled so uh, thank you very much for giving us uh, this opportunity to talk about street animals. Thank you very much. <laughs>